You want me to put that on my todger? Harry's wife. Boiling point. An article by Daniela Elsa, appearing on news.com.au, is headlined, Stalk Their Every Move. Paparazzi shots reveal Harry's wife and Harry's huge mistake, which apparently is leaving Harry's wife at boiling point. Elsa asks just who is the most famous royal dog? For a very long time, it was Boy, Prince Rupert's white poodle, who famously fought alongside him during the English Civil War in the 1640s, and was widely believed at the time to have magical powers, and was the first official dog attached to the British Armed Services. In the 20th century, he was superseded by Her Late Majesty's truly iconic corgi, Susan, and her more than 30 descendants, who ended up appearing on the cover of Vanity Fair and being flown by private plane. However, today, there is a new top palace pooch, Guy the Rescue Beagle, owned by Harry's wife, the Duchess of Sussex. In the last five years, Guy has moved from Toronto to London, travelled with her late majesty, lived in two royal residences, relocated to the West Coast, appeared in a Netflix series, and now is being subjected to that most Hollywood of experiences, being papped. Last week, Harry's wife and Guy headed to their local Monte Chicho Farmer's Market, where the Duchess was pictured shopping for flowers and sampling honey, see parts pass him. It would have been quite lovely, except for the fact that the Duchess's outing marked the seventh time in only two months that she had been photographed doing nothing more extraordinary than going about her life. There is irony, and there is irony, because Harry's wife and husband Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, decamped from the United Kingdom in part to escape the British press, and have instead found themselves in the crosshairs of US snappers who increasingly seem to stalk their every move. Now, what Daniela Elsa seems to be missing is they aren't stalking them. It's arranged for them to be photographed because Harry's wife has run out of ideas. She made such play of the victim mentality and the treatment by the royal family and the public at large. That got her so far, but sympathy soon started to dry up as a consequence of the contradictions that she engaged in, the revisions of history, the entitled observations. After that, what was there to fall back on? A shitty podcast which bored most people to tears? A Netflix series which was just more of the same in terms of a wine fest? As I've told you so many times before, she's a talent-free zone. And therefore, in order to try and keep herself relevant, in order to assert control and draw fuel and look to obtain residual benefits. She arranges to be papped. We've seen it time and time again. However, it's being portrayed as something that's problematic for her. Elsa continues by explaining, think of this as sort of adios limey frying pan, hello Californian fire situation. These shots of Harry's wife and her pup are just the latest instance of she and her family being stealthily photographed while out in public, including her along with the Duke and their daughter Princess Lilibet at a 4th of July parade, the Sussexes walking to their car, Harry's wife walking to a car avec a stock standard burly guard, and the Duke and Duchess heading out for some negri. Here's the real kicker. It's not just that the Sussexes appear to be targeted by the roving paps with increasing frequency, but that it is happening at a time when they are doing absolutely nothing newsworthy. Well, isn't that all of the time? Sure, their career travails have been making headlines, but otherwise the duo's greatest achievement of late would have been staying zip-lipped for what feels like an unusually lengthy period of time. No podcasts, no interviews, no charity outings. And yet, since March, they have also been photographed while out to dinner and lunch in Los Angeles, as well as said big car walks and sushi din dins. Harry's wife has also been snapped hiking with friends and having a day out with daughter Lily. In April, the Duke and Duchess were also photographed at an L.A. Lakers basketball game, surrounded by staffers. And in May, they were caught up in that paparazzi imbroglio in New York that was, 
according to them, near catastrophic. But once again, what this demonstrates is this. There's nothing going on, but Harry's wife cannot stay quiet. She needs the mundane to be photographed so that people will react to it. The offers for her to bore people to death with mundane beige speeches are drying up, or maybe have dried up. The opportunities with charities are not as prevalent as they once were. But she cannot just go about life, enjoying her millions, dealing with her family, and keeping a low profile. Her narcissism will not allow it. She has to be seen. She has to be regaled. She has to be commented on. Because at the heart of it all, she has that unrelenting need to draw fuel. The people must be controlled. The people must respond. They must talk about her, comment upon her. She wants it to be favourable, of course, because she wants that pure, positive fuel. She wants to drink it in. She wants to draw of that fuel. She cannot help it. She has no hope other than to do it. It is a quest that she is sent on by her narcissism each and every day, and part of it is to try and seek to draw it from the public at large. Elsa estimates the Sussexes have been papped more in the last four months than William and Kate, the Prince and Princess of Wales, and their family have been in the last four years. Again, that's nothing to do with the appetites of the paparazzi and everything to do with the insatiable thirst for fuel that Harry's wife has. This is the brave new world of living La Vida Sussex, where they are targeted by the freelance shooters even when they are just going about their everyday, unremarkable 1,000-thread-count Egyptian cotton lives. Not so. It is a consequence of the necessity of Harry's wife needing to be noticed. Elsa poses the question, so is this onslaught an indication of what lies ahead for Harry and Harry's wife and their kids when it comes to the paparazzi? While the Duke and Duchess might divide opinions like Vegemite, the power of Avatar, the world is obsessed with them. Whether they are adored or abhorred, or seen as saints or sacrilegious sinners, vast swathes of the planet are totally and utterly hooked on them. It is a situation the Duke and Duchess have only unintentionally stoked in recent times by taking their truth and stretching it out for a six-part TV series and 400-plus page memoir. They fed the people's hunger for them via Netflix and Spare, and the end result is an insatiable public appetite for them. Again, this isn't actually accurate. It's an insatiable public appetite for seeing them fuck up, not for them per se. Elsa continues by stating, Ask yourself, when was the last time you saw a paparazzi shot of Kate? Sure, these sorts of covertly snapped images do occasionally pop up. But for a woman who, until last year, lived in central London, only a few hundred metres from the Daily Mail offices in Kensington, and who lives a very normal life, they are noteworthy for their rarity. The reason for their rarity is that Kate has no need to tip off the paparazzi. The most recent that Elsa is aware of are from early 2022, when she was snapped leaving Sloan Department Store, Peter Jones. There's not a reflection of the lack of public interest in Kate, but of shifting attitudes in Britain towards the sort of marauding carnivorous paparazzi of the 90s. If the princess today faced the sort of onslaught that Diana, Princess of Wales, did, then there would be a swift and vociferous backlash from the media-consuming public. That extreme level of intrusion is no longer acceptable. But that's the situation in the United Kingdom. To misquote George Bernard Shaw, the British and the Americans are two great peoples divided by a common tongue when it comes to the paps. It feels like, in recent months, the temperature is inching closer and closer to boiling point on this front. Since landing in North America, the Sussexes have repeatedly called in the lawyers to try and protect their privacy. But it feels a bit like trying to hold back a tidal wave with an esky lid. Just to really double down on the irony here, on the same day that the new Harry's wife photos came out, Kate was in London doing her usual summer job of watching the tennis in dresses. But here's the thing. When it comes to both the Duchess and the Princess, two women separated by a literal and figurative ocean, 
they are united in the reality they both face is not what they want. Harry's wife has not gotten some peaceful life where she can waft around the Tony environs of Santa Barbara, putting her titanium Amex to work before repairing a home to polish her collection of Emmys. She doesn't want that peaceful life. It's of no use to her. It doesn't accord with the prime aims. And Kate has not ended up in a situation where she and husband, Prince William, have another co-HRH couple to help share the royal working load with them. The Sussexes are now facing a major career slump, and the Waleses have been left to single-handedly carry the can for the monarchy. Elsa's article, seeming to suggest that it's a boiling point with regard to not having a peaceful life, begets her failure to recognise that Harry's wife is a narcissist and must court the publicity, indeed try and arrange it, whereas Kate, Princess of Wales, doesn't need to do so. They're different people. One is an empath, the other is a narcissist. And Danielle and Elsa misses that point entirely, for if she did understand that, she would understand why Harry's wife keeps getting snapped when nothing is really happening. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.